Well, welcome to another edition of News of the Day. And uh, the topic today is dark photons. Fortunately, you're seeing this recording through bright photons. Uh, but for several years now, physicists and astronomers have speculated that in addition to bright photons, there might be dark photons, and how these dark photons may actually make up a significant fraction, if not most, of the dark matter that's in the universe. Uh, dark matter. Uh, there's no doubt that dark matter exists. Uh, dark matter, by definition, is matter that does not strongly interact with light, and maybe not at all, but very weakly, if at all. And that contrasts with ordinary matter. Ordinary matter, made up of protons, neutrons, and electrons, has the property that it strongly interacts with photons. And because it does, it's easy to detect. Dark matter, uh, very difficult to detect because the particles that make up dark matter uh, do not interact with light at all, or if they do, they do it at an extremely weak level. However, we can detect dark matter by its gravitational influence. So as we look at the universe, we can see that there are dark matter halos surrounding galaxy clusters, surrounding individual galaxies. Dark matter is actually crucial uh, to stabilize the spiral structure of a galaxy so that advanced life would exist. In our own Milky Way galaxy, 90% of its mass is made up of dark matter. The stars and nebulae that we see uh, makes up just 10% of the total mass of our Milky Way galaxy. And uh, the halo is huge. Uh, it's almost 2 million light years across, whereas the stellar structure is only a little more than 100,000 light years across. But it's that huge halo of dark matter that stabilizes the spiral structure of a Milky Way galaxy to a sufficient degree to make advanced life possible. And because of its gravitational influence, we astronomers have been able to determine that dark matter makes up about 24.5% of all the stuff of the universe. Ordinary matter, by comparison, makes up just 4.5%. Uh, but one of the holy grails of astrophysics is to find the particles that actually comprise this dark matter. And this has been going on for some time. Uh, Astrophysicists and particle physicists know this will be no easy task because of the very weak interaction that dark matter has with photons. Uh, but they're hopeful uh, that a time will come when we'll be able to detect these particles. They've already detected neutrinos, uh, which are par part of dark matter. But we already know that neutrinos, as abundant as they are, make up just a tiny fraction of the dark matter in the universe. So the real quest is to find the particle that makes up the dominant component of dark matter. Several candidates are out there, sterile neutrinos, axions, but one of those candidates uh, is dark photons. Now, uh, dark photons is the simplest extension of what's referred to as a standard model of particle physics, the standard particle creation model. And one of the wonders of advancing master physics is we've been able to show uh, that the particle creation model is completely compatible with the cosmic creation model, the Big Bang creation model. Uh, but both astronomers and physicists are eager to find what particles make up uh, the uh, majority of dark matter, if not all of dark, nearly all of dark matter, because that will enable them uh, to develop a more detailed particle creation model and a more detailed cosmic creation model. Now, what's interesting about dark photons, uh, dark photons, by the way, a paper just got published on this. This is it. It was literally published just a few days ago in Physical Review Letters. Uh, the lead author uh, or the primary, uh, several uh, physicists were involved in this, but Fiona McCarthy is the uh, uh, first author on the paper. Title of the paper, Dark Photons, uh, dark photon limits from patchy dark screening of the cosmic microwave background. And uh, what they're actually doing is trying to find a novel way to determine the existence of these dark photons, or at least to put a strong upper limit on uh, the existence of these dark photons. And uh, let me just read from the second paragraph here. It makes the point that this would be, if dark photons exist, it would be the simplest extension of the standard particle creation model. And what a dark photon is, it's a light massive vector uh, boson. Uh, and 
It's a low energy consequence of string theory. So this might actually be a novel way of determining if there's any validity or truth uh, to string theory that I wrote about in my book, Beyond the Cosmos, third edition. So this paper is getting a lot of attention. Uh, and what the authors actually did is uh, it's the very first time that they took the most detailed map of the cosmic microwave background radiation. That's the radiation left over from the cosmic creation event. They compared that uh, with the very best and most comprehensive uh, survey of galaxies. And so the Planck uh, map uh, put out by the European Space Agency uh, today ranks as the most detailed map of the radiation left over from the cosmic creation event. Basically, it maps the hot and cold spots of the universe when the universe is only 380,000 years old. And the Big Bang creation model tells us that the hot spots as the universe begins to uh, grow uh, will produce uh, galaxy clusters and that the uh, cold spots will be the voids between galaxy clusters. And this is one of, one of the big demonstrations of the validity of the Big Bang creation model. We can look at the map of the cosmic microwave background radiation, compare it with maps of galaxies and galaxy clusters, and we see that the positions of galaxy and galaxy clusters uh, do indeed uh, coincide with the hot spots in the radiation left over from the cosmic creation event. And the slide I got here actually shows you the best map of the cosmic microwave background radiation. And uh, you know, all those little hot spots, uh, orange and red are the hot spots, uh, you know, green and blue are the cold spots. Indeed, uh, we can see with maps of galaxies and galaxy clusters, these hot spots indeed do evolve into galaxies and galaxy clusters. Uh, but what this team was pointing out, if indeed uh, dark photons make up a large fraction of the dark matter in the universe, uh, then uh, as photons, ordinary photons, bright photons, uh, begin to radiate out from the cosmic background radiation, and they begin to engage uh, these dense plasmas of electrons that surround galaxy clusters and big galaxies, uh, that some of those dark photons will morph to become uh, bright photons. And if that happens, it will stimulate extra patchiness in the cosmic microwave background radiation. As you can see from the map, you can see that it's quite patchy. Uh, and there's many factors that actually contribute to the patchiness, not just uh, the positions of galaxies and galaxy clusters. And so a lot of what was done in this paper uh, was a very careful analysis of the cosmic microwave background radiation map to discern all the contributions to patchiness and if there's any extra patchiness that could be attributed to the dark photons. And the conclusion of the paper is they didn't find any extra patchiness. And what this did is it put a strong upper limit on the number of these uh, dark photons that exist within a certain mass range. Uh, the mass range was from you know, 10 to the minus 11 to 10 to the minus 13 electron volts. And they ended the paper by saying this could be extended to other mass ranges. We already know if dark photons exist, they'll have extremely low mass. And so this is one mass region that was checked and basically saying we don't see any evidence uh, for these dark photons. And, uh, and therefore, this tells us that at least within that mass range, dark photons do not make up a significant fraction of the dark matter in the universe, we will have to look elsewhere. But they also note at the end of their paper uh, that we can look at new maps of galaxies, especially pick out the big, bright, dense galaxies, which are going to have a denser uh, plasma. Plasma, by the way, just means charged particles. And so uh, you have these free-floating electrons that are very dense. This will actually enable them to get an even stronger a limit on these uh, dark photons, and they'll be able to extend it to different mass ranges. And at the very end of the paper, they said, uh, we can actually extend this technique uh, to explore the possible existence of axions. Axions remain, as a result of this research, as the leading candidate to make up nearly all of the dark matter in the universe. 
That was back in June 24 of this year, 2024, that we did a News of the Day where we talked about the latest uh, attempt to detect axions and how we may be very close to detecting axions by looking at massive stars that are orbiting about the supermassive black hole in our galaxy. So yeah, you can watch that. It's still up on our YouTube channel. So go to the Reasons to Believe YouTube channel and uh, you can see the June 24th, uh, 2024 recording of News of the Day and uh, it'll give you some insight there. But this paper basically ends by saying this may be another way to detect axions uh, which currently are the leading candidates. Very low mass particles, very difficult to detect, uh, but astronomers are hopeful uh, that they'll be able to detect these particles relatively soon. And just by ruling out the dark photons, it puts more attention on axions being the candidate. But yes, people would love it, not just astronomers, but people who are uh, lay people would love it if we could actually identify the particles that comprise all the dark matter of the universe, determine the masses of these particles, the number of these particles. That would certainly give us some insight on exactly how dark matter is able to stabilize galaxies and galaxy clusters. It will give us new evidence uh, for the design features of our universe that makes advanced life possible. Uh, so a lot of excitement as a result of uh, this paper. Uh, but the bottom line is that axions now remain as a leading candidate to make up the majority of uh, dark matter uh, in the universe. And you can go to the Physical Review Letters website. Uh, this paper is actually available with no page charge. They decided to make it publicly available uh, for free to the public because of the significance of the paper. It's in the October 4th issue of Physical Review Letters. So yes, you can read the entire paper. It's about seven pages long. Four of the pages are pretty technical, but read the first couple of pages and the last page, and I think you'll be able to get a lot more detail than I've been able to share with you today. Uh, but thank you for watching this. And by the way, we have many News of the Day episodes that are posted now at, uh, on our YouTube channel, Reasons Believe YouTube channel. Encourage you to watch all of them. Typically, they run from 10 to 20 minutes. Most of them are around 15 minutes. So uh, you can get through those quickly. And people tell me it really encourages their faith uh, to watch those episodes and to share it with people who do not yet have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Thank you.